Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. It's very good to see you all here together. I do always find myself a bit moved when I, when I see you um, processing in. We come as we remember the culmination of Jesus' life and ministry in these holy days. We come together to share in the ministry and celebrate the ministry which is a gift to each of us. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. with the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, who anointed your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and with power to bring to us the blessings of your kingdom, anoint your church with the same Holy Spirit that we who share in his suffering and his victory may bear witness to the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. For the word of the Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, by your Spirit, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I remember the first Maundy Thursday service I went to as a curate about 120 years ago in Rochester Cathedral. Whether the information hadn't been clear or whether I had not paid enough attention, I have no idea, but while I was well aware that it was a three-line whip to turn up, and if you didn't, you'd better write a formal letter of apology explaining exactly why you were not coming lest you fell out of favor with the bishop. That's a very bad thing. Anyway, I'd missed the bit where it said to robe. By the way, I'm not having a go at those of you who, for whatever reason, haven't chosen to robe today. So, rather sheepishly, I melted into a corner somewhere, only to discover that I would have to stand up, now very visibly, because no one around me was, when it came to responding to the renewal of commitment to the ordination vows. Now, despite this bumpy start, I very quickly came to love this service. Yes, jolly inconvenient in Holy Week to have to travel to the cathedral, and in Rochester, I did live at the opposite end of the diocese. And yet, I invariably felt this service was all the more important to stop me in my tracks of buzzing around, having organized a donkey, sorting the readers, the soft furnishing removal for the evening, persuading the flower team not to rush in a minute after 3 p.m. on Friday. Oh, and trying to get hold of fair trade Easter eggs to give to the congregation on Easter Day, and so on. You know the list. The Chrism Eucharist, stopping me in my tracks of institutional and community busyness, reminding me that I'm part of something greater, something bigger, a part of a community beyond the local that seeks to serve, and while reminding me what it's all about, also refreshing and feeding me through one another, through the sacrament, through anointing. So what is it all about? Jesus' life and ministry, the culmination of which we mark in these coming days, shows us ultimately that ministry is for others. I think 
Whenever the words, my ministry, pass our lips too easily, we should probably feel a bit queasy. Of course we can speak of my ministry, its development, its strengths, its joys, its struggles, meaning the ministry related to me. But just sometimes there is that nasty tendency for my ministry, rather than just referring to me, becoming a ministry I possess. It is Christ's ministry into which we are privileged to enter, the one who came among us as one who serves. Therefore, there is no authority in the church except that which is born of service, not the authority of will or force, but of service. That's what this gospel today is about. It is Christ's ministry, it's not about us. And that is not something that should put us down, it doesn't put us down, it is a liberating message. When we take ourselves too seriously, and we get upset because we think our status is not given due respect, it's Christ's, or all for Jesus all for Jesus, as we like to sing. And because it is Christ's ministry, it is so good to come together this Maundy Thursday, because it's what we all share in. Do you remember the excitement when you were first ordained? Well, probably a bit daunted as well, but a joyful occasion, often eliciting a mix of pride and reverence and awe among family and friends if also perhaps some bewilderment. As Archbishop Nichols wrote, but there's also a danger that authority will be attached to the ordained without reserve and to the person rather than the office of deacon, priest, or bishop. Both lay people and clergy may forget that the power held in these ministries belongs to God alone. Lay people may grant, consciously or unconsciously, undue authority to clergy. That's an unhappy collusion indeed. And there is the flip side of the coin. When expectations far exceed our personal gifts or capacities, and we struggle to be recognized as a human being, unable to meet all these expectations, leading to stress impacting our well-being. Here too, we need to hear that liberating message. It is Christ's ministry, not ours. And this applies both to lay and ordained ministry. We can have unrealistic expectations of each other, and clergy can also forget that lay people may be offering ministry on top of full-time work at home or outside the home. When unrealistic expectations are not met and stress spills over in short-tempered exchanges, we need to remember the humanity of clergy as well as of lay ministers and give each other some rope and be kind. It is Christ's ministry. We're putting a lot of effort in these days in the Church of England into the concept of leadership. And I think I can see a wry smile on the faces of those of you involved in ministry discernment. And Samuel's discernment of the future king of Israel with the qualities of ruddy, beautiful eyes and handsome doesn't quite fit stage one or stage two of our national discernment panels. And yet, of course, that passage also reminds us of the importance of seeking to look with God's eyes and expecting the unexpected, whatever the age, whatever the background. So, leadership is important. Community leadership is important at a time when so many structures in society are fragile and when anxieties loom large. We know there will be a general election this year, and we also know 
there will be individuals, groups, and movements seeking to exploit those who feel anxious and forgotten, and seeking to heighten community tensions rather than cohesion. Leadership will be called for, as is leadership to encourage and nurture our congregations in mission. For our chief ministry is, to quote, the, to equip the saints for ministry, especially with young people, where we've lost significant confidence. So I'm pleased that you will have received a letter from me about Launchpad. So what about bishops, priests, and deacons? We know our understanding can be a bit hazy. The ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons is regarded by some as something that we must kind of cope with. It's a relic of the past. We need to work around it rather than the structure and essence of our mission and ministry as Anglicans. When we speak of leadership, we can quickly get into hierarchies, especially the hierarchy that the ordained are, of course, superior to lay ministries. Instead, let us remember where we are today. Cathedrals are not just big churches so that we all fit in. They have a particular place in the body of Christ. The cathedral is the fount of mission because it is the principal place from where people of God are sent into the world. It's here that your ordination likely took place, except if it was during COVID. The bishop provides the teaching and sacramental nourishment for the body of Christ that is the energy for its mission in the world. And here's the important bit. All priests share in the presidency of the bishop and the feeding and sending ministry that is integral to it, that is integral to every Eucharist celebrated around our parishes and chaplaincies and wherever you will be. Receive the cure of souls which is both yours and mine. And that's why the then Bishop of Rochester did actually have a point insisting all clergy to be present at the Chrism Eucharist. Have I forgotten those of you who are in lay ministry? No. And I put this in the words of Michael Ramsey. The ordained priest is called to reflect the priesthood of Christ and to serve the priesthood of the people of God and to be one of the means of grace whereby God enables the church to be the church. And lay ministries truly exemplify that. We're celebrating Holy Communion and it is more than a happy coincidence that as we remember Jesus in the upper room, sharing that last supper, we also recommit to our ministry vows. Because the Eucharist is also about the meaning of ministry and the orders of ministry in the church. We are fed in scripture and sacrament as one flock. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. To quote Simon Oliver, the bishop is the principal president of the one Eucharist in whose ministry priests share, but everyone, all the baptized, are now drawn into this sacrificial ministry in their reception of the Eucharist by which they are made. As it says in 1 Peter, they are made a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. We know of the priesthood of all believers. We know of the church as priestly because we have priests with the, bosh with the bishop as the fount of the church's priestly ministry. But this is never intended to obscure the ministry of the whole people of God. It is to encourage and nourish and set free the ministries of the whole church. So that the church's ministry is carried out in every sphere of life, at home, 
and we know that we've got a lot of work to do to encourage overtly Christian home life at home, in school, in workplace, and in community. It's a good while ago that I was a curate on Maundy Thursday in Rochester Cathedral. Now, as your bishop, I still love this service. It is still reminding me that I'm part of a community that seeks to serve. Together we join in Christ's ministry, and together we are fed by the sacrament. And now I feel incredibly supported and prayed for by you. Thank you. Thank you for all your service, ordained, lay, in church, outside church, service for the kingdom. And thanks be to God for counting us worthy to be here, to worship and to serve. So God bless your, God bless our ministry, our mission in these holy days. Amen. and sisters at his last supper our Lord Jesus Christ gave his disciples a new commandment that they should love one another and he prayed that they may be one he gave them an everlasting sign of his own love in the sacrament of bread and wine he consecrated himself to his father's service to be the high priest of the new covenant I invite you now to dedicate yourselves afresh 
to his service as stewards of the mysteries of God and ministers of his grace. At your ordination as bishop, you receive the gift of the Spirit that you might lead the church in mission and send out ministers in Christ's name, that you might promote its unity, uphold its discipline, and guard its faith, and that you might teach and govern the people committed to your charge. Will you continue faithfully in this ministry, watching over Christ's own flock and building them up in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. By the help of God, I will. At your ordination to the priesthood, you took authority to watch over and care for God's people, to absolve and bless them in his name, to proclaim the gospel of salvation and to minister the sacraments of his new covenant. Will you continue as faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, preaching the gospel of Christ and ministering his holy sacraments? At your ordination as a deacon, you received the yoke of Christ who came not to be served, but to serve. Will you continue faithfully in this ministry to build up God's people in his truth and serve them in his name? When you were commissioned, you undertook to be faithful in prayer and by word and example, to minister to those for whom Christ died. Will you do all that is in your power to witness to God's love for his people? May the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will accomplish it. Amen. My brothers and sisters, pray for all who minister, that they may be constant in prayer and steadfast in faith and serve your people with joy. Pray for your deacons, that the Lord may pour upon them the riches of his grace. Pray that he who has called them to his service may make them worthy of his calling. Pray for your priests, Ask the Lord to bless them with the fullness of his love, that they may be faithful ministers of his word and sacrament and lead his people in the way of salvation. Pray for your bishops, that they may be faithful to the great trust that has been handed to them. Pray that they may become more like our good shepherd and great high priest, the teacher and servant of us all, and so become more and more a sign of Christ's loving presence amongst us. Pray for the families of those who minister, for their homes and for all with whom they share their lives. May the Lord in his love keep us ever close to him, and may he bring us all to the fullness of eternal life. Amen.
God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with Christ with every spiritual blessing.
Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought light out of darkness, and daily your spirit renews the face of the earth. Your anointed son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might praise your name forever. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this oil in your name. May they be made whole in body, mind, and spirit, restored in your image, renewed in your love, and serve you as sons and daughters in your kingdom. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, sovereign God, the protector of all, who believe in you. Your anointed son overcame the powers of evil when he was lifted high upon the cross. By the power of your spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this oil in your name. As they come to the waters of baptism, may it be for them a sign of your defense in their fight against sin the world and the devil, and bring them to share in Christ's victory. Blessed are you, sovereign God and eternal Father, upholding by your grace all who hear your call. Under your old covenant, priests and kings were anointed to serve you, and in the fullness of time you anointed your Son by the Holy Spirit to be the Christ, the, ser the Savior and servant of all. By the power of your Spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this chrism in your name. Let it be for them a sign of joy and gladness as they share in the royal priesthood of the new covenant and make known the kingdom of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we lift our voices of thanks and praise. Amen. Blessed be God, our strength and our salvation now and forever.
pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. By the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, you anointed him to be the servant of all and ordained that he should enter into your kingdom through suffering. And now he stands by us and pours out for our healing the oil of consolation and the wine of renewed hope. In your wisdom and love, you anoint your holy people to be a royal priesthood, to share in Christ's suffering and to reveal his glory to the world. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise we too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. 
And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Being made one in the power of the Spirit, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, are, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Good Shepherd, you have welcomed us at your table and have anointed us with the oil of gladness. May your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Father whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. The Son who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.